from the News Channel 5 Network, this is Titans Talk. Welcome to Titans Talk here on News Channel 5 Plus. I'm Jonathan Hutton as we discuss the Tennessee Titans over the next hour with Rhett Bryan of Titans Radio, the executive producer and game day host of the Titans Radio Network. Uh, first, though, we'll recap some of what head coach Ken Wisenhunt had to say as we take a look at the 10-7 loss yesterday to the Atlanta Falcons. The Titans were without Marcus Mariota as we check out the highlights. Scoreless in the second quarter. Matt Ryan has his pass tipped and picked off by David Bass. A great athletic play by the former Chicago Bear. Ensuing drive, Mettenberger fires over the middle for Kendall Wright. Great throw, 19 yards, and the Titans had a 7 to nothing lead at the half, or excuse me, 7-3 at the half. Third quarter, Dirty Birds finally find the end zone. Ryan to Julio Jones, nine catches, 92 yards for him. This touchdown makes it 10-7 Atlanta. Later in the fourth, same score. Titans trying to drive for the win, but Mettenberger picked off by Robinson Therese, and that will do it as the Titans drop all four games in their homestand. 10-7 your final. Devontae Freeman with 116 yards rushing. Mettenberger throws for 187 and two interceptions. Titans left to ponder another tough defeat. And Ken Wisenhunt today discussing Marcus Mariota and whether or not he'll play this week as the Titans head to Houston. Well, it goes without saying, disappointed with the outcome after the way our guys fought today. You know, I'm proud as hell of the way they did that. Just excuse me. <clears throat> we had a, multiple situations happen, especially with guys going down, and our defense just kept fighting and making plays and two huge stands for us at the end of the game to give us a chance. So, um, you know, against one of the better teams in the league. But obviously, we got to get over that hump. We had the ball in our hand at the end with a chance to tie it or win it, and, and we can't make mistakes there. Can you talk about what happened at the end of the first half? There seemed to be a lot going on in that one sequence from the timeout to the interception to a, an apparent no call. Yeah. Um, I saw what you, you guys saw on the screen. I mean, it was pretty obvious to me, but there's nothing you can do about it. So it was unfortunate because uh, we had the guy open in the end zone. That's where he was going with it. He get hit in the head? Did, did Zach get hit in the head? That's what I saw on the replay. He got hit in his, his face mask. Did that, did, that, did that happen after the throw? Or did that During, the throw? Right, as the throw is what, oh. it, is what it looked like on the video. But on the final play, did, did Zach did not see him? Did that put enough air on, under the ball? Or what? I can't say if he didn't see him, but it, obviously if he'd put a foot more air on it or just got it over him, Kendall was uh, open on the other side. How would you assess Zach overall? I turned the ball over a couple of times. Well, I mean, you know, Zach hadn't hadn't played in a game in a while, a regular season game, but uh, he made some good throws early, and we didn't catch the football. Well, the one down the field to Justin, he made another good throw on a crossing route. Um, you know, there, there's always things you throws you want back as a quarterback, but he handled the process. I mean, he's working with a third team center that had been in here for two days and they were trying to pressure us so there was a lot of things going on that I thought he handled well but you know as we all saw there's probably a couple of throws he'd like to have back. Did the Falcons amp up the pressure after Garrett went out? Did they Absolutely to, yeah. that's what it, that's what I saw. How, uh, how tough a circumstance for Looney is that and how much could you do to help him? Well, we did. We tried to we tried to get it out quick. It really limits you in what you can do. You know, when you're when you're getting a lot of blitz looks and a lot of different guys from different spots, a big part of that is how you communicate your protections. Um, and we mixed them up, and you know, for the most part, we did a pretty good job. It's just it limits you as far as being able to make some throws because you uh, you have to keep an extra guy in to help chip and help protect. You said guys didn't catch the football, which was a big part of it. Is, is there come a time to shake things up there and, and to put somebody new in to give them a chance? To well, I mean, it was pretty shooken up today. We had guys in different spots, different packages. I mean, you know, it wasn't – it's – everybody got an opportunity to do that. Justin, on that on that play, I mean, it was a crazy play, and he got turned around, but he's got it right there. Yeah. How do is he to be at a point where a ball that's in his hands is in his hands? 
That's what the NFL is all about. You see that. You saw the one on the, uh, I mean, that's what you're paid to do is make those plays. And uh, he had the opportunity to catch it. And unfortunately, we didn't come down with it. What led to the timeout before before the interception at halftime? I, it looked like they were in a zero all up on the line scrimmage. They were. They were. We were. We were at zero on the play clock. So, oh, okay. so I didn't want to take five yard penalty from there. Can Was it, it feel a little bit like Groundhog Day for you? A little bit the way these close losses are all kind of piling up on you. Um. Yeah, it's tough. No question about it. Um. You know, every one of them is different. But, uh, you know, it, it is, uh, it hurts. It hurts because our guys have worked so hard to get there and they're so close. And, uh, I mean, even if you look at what we went through today with the number of injuries, with losing cornerbacks, I mean, we had Cody Riggs in there making a play on Julio Jones, you know, going against their best guys. So our guys battled and played. I mean, it's a great credit to them. But, you know, it's hard. It's hard when you work that hard and you're that close and you don't come out with the win because that's what this is all about. And those guys, they deserve a win. They've worked that hard. So, But with that being said, you know, we, we got to keep plugging because it'll turn for us. Did you feel like after that, that fourth down stop that maybe you did have that momentum of things were about to turn there? Did you get the ball back? In that last two minute, John? I mean, we had it over the 50. We were 10 yards from being in field goal territory. And... Uh, you know, we thought preserve a field goal, touchdown, and win this thing. Felt good about it. That's where, you know, that's, that's, we worked hard to get there, and everything about that game was geared towards giving us a chance to do that, and we got there, and unfortunately, we didn't finish it. It was thoughts on the way Antonio Andrews performed today, especially. He ran well, ran physical, did a nice job. That's a, that's the number one ranked run defense in the league, and, uh, and we had some good runs on him, and Antonio did a nice job. Cody sends the most best performance to you guys. His compete level looked pretty high today. I mean, I've said a couple of times about Cody and how proud I am for, for what he's done for us this year and how he's battled and competed. And you always pull for guys to have success. And Cody is, is doing a really good job. Uh, you, you know, you, you, it's hard to say because of, you want to go back and watch the actual tape, but. I'll say one thing about him. He really competed. Wesley seems like he's helped the defense tone a little bit. He made that play on the, on the run at, right at the goal line. What's, what's he done since he's been back in base? He's been a great leader. That's why he's one of our captains. And, uh, you know, I think he's an unselfish guy. He's a really important part of why we are close in these games because there's a mentality uh, that he's helping foster along with some of our other guys that's what's going to put us over the top. He's a valuable part of our team. It's a tough day for third downs for you guys. Were there too many third and longs? Yeah, oh yeah. It was too many third and longs. You know, we had a couple of penalties on second down and put us in third and long. And, you know, we, we had a couple opportunities to convert and didn't convert. McCordy went back in briefly. And, John, some of that goes to the protection, too. You know, you having to make sure you're protecting. McCordy went back in briefly after getting hurt from the fair to assume it's not a serious issue this time. <clears throat> I don't know. We, we tested, you know, we came in at halftime and we didn't know if he was going to be able to go. And uh, he went back out and tested it and we thought he could. And then on the one crossing route, you could see he was laboring a little bit so he came out. So a lot of it's going to be dependent upon how he responds this week. Again, uh, you're in position to talk about being close and, and talking about it'll turn, but it keeps mounting and mounting and mounting. It, 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 you feel like guys are still... Yeah, I do. I think our guys are still engaged, and I think they showed that today. We had a tough game last week, and uh, you saw a team that had a lot of resiliency. You know, Paul, that's part of this game. And I don't think there's anything wrong with saying that we're close. And you're right. We haven't won a game yet. We haven't won one of those close games. But that doesn't mean that we're going to stop or that we're not almost there. So, um, you know, we're going to keep fighting. And like I said, I think we're very close to getting over that hump. And if you ask our players, I think they'll tell you the same thing. They believe in that. You, you understand that the, the questions, though, that concern about the two-year cumulative result? Yeah, I understand, Paul. 
I do understand. But I, I tell you one other thing I understand, Paul. I understand we're a different football team than we were last year. We're playing with a lot of young guys. We've got a lot of things going on. But we're a much better football team than we were last year. And, I, and I'll be happy to debate that with you. Well, you said after last year that we were comparing things too much to last year. So at what point does comparing things to last year now not That's your job. I guess you're going to do that because you have a tendency to want to do that. I'm just saying. I'm compare this year to this year. Well, I mean, if you what's look at. What's better from the first game to now? What's that? What's, what's better from the first game to now? Not last year, this year. What's better? Yeah. Well, we've been in every game that we've been except last week's game. And even then, we had a chance when we were down to come back and, and I mean, how do you compare it to the first game, Paul? We got up 42 to 21 or 42 to whatever it was. Things went our way and we played good football. But there have been stretches where we played well. There have been stretches where we made mistakes. Is compounding that because these four happened at home, they were so close, is it compounded that it's not happening in these four at home? It hurts. There's no question it hurts. I mean, you want to be a good home football team, and we haven't done that. Um, you know, I, I, you, you want it to be different, but we're working to get there. The, uh, the fourth down play that, that didn't work for you guys, does Hunter need to run that a little further up? If it looked like even if he caught that, he might have been short anyhow. I think if he had caught it, that he would have gotten it, but... You know, we'll, we'll have a chance to review it after we've seen it. I was just looking off of the pictures that I saw. I know it's been a while since Zach's been out there, but were you pleased with his ability to step up in the pocket when pressure was coming from behind him? I thought at times he did a nice job in there. He was under control. He made good decisions getting the ball out. Um, you know, uh, as with anything, there's always going to be a couple that you won't back. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll look at it and see. He, he, he got hit low at one point. Any worry there with his health, or he may get through that okay? Who's Zach? That? He got hurt, hit low at one point. He seemed to be okay. And we haven't discussed that. Andy uh, Gallic, just a stinger. He's in the protocol. Okay. That's Ken Wisenhunt following yesterday's loss to the Atlanta Falcons by a final score of 10 to 7. We open up the phone lines now for the rest of the hour. When we come back, Rhett Bryan of the Titans Radio Network will be in studio with us. We're going to be talking Titans with you at 615-737-7767. Titans talk tonight on News Channel 5 Plus. Again, 737-7767. Your phone calls next. <laughs> 